Okay, but like, did you know that in China, they're making corned beef out of dead bodies? I know, right? China is like so overpopulated, they don't even know what to do with their corpses. So they put them in cans and ship them to Africa as food. No, no, yeah, it's real. I read it on the internet and Africa's like really pissed. Shock of all shocks, that little tidbit of news is completely false. It originated on Facebook several years ago. Someone posted a picture of a human form made of meat, claiming that it was evidence of China canning and exporting corpse meat. In actuality, the meat body was part of a marketing campaign for the video game Resident Evil 6, which is like zombie monsters, bioterrorism, I think. This should be the fakest of all fake stories, but a tabloid ran with it in Zambia, and so much uproar occurred that Zambia's deputy defense minister pledged to investigate the allegations. China's ambassador to Zambia actually had to issue a statement saying they were not in fact sending their corpse meat to Africa, or Zambia, or anywhere. That whole international brouhaha, that hoax, started with a Facebook post and a gnarly PR photo for a video game. When it comes to hoaxes, as we recently saw with the whole morgue worker got cremated while taking a nap debacle, we love ourselves a good morbid and macabre story that seems to confirm our deepest fears or darkest curiosities. Conjure up a story about cannibalism, communing with the dead, or Japanese cadaver skin dolls? Yes, that was briefly a thing, and no, it is definitely not real. And you might just find yourself an overnight sensation. While of course the internet has made creating hoaxes so much easier, hoaxes having to do with death and the dead are nothing new. Take the spiritualists of the mid 19th century to early 20th century, who elevated hoaxes to a high lucrative art. Claiming to be able to communicate with the dead, the spiritualists held many Americans wrapped for decades. The unwitting founders of the spiritualist movement were teenagers Maggie and Kate Fox of Hydesville, New York. What started off as a prank to convince their mother that their house was haunted in the winter of 1848 soon spiraled out of control when not only their mother believed in the ghost they were communicating with, but so did everyone else. Seeing an opportunity, their older sister Leo whisked them off to Rochester, where the Fox sisters were billed as spirit mediums, who would hold seances to communicate with people's dead loved ones for a price. Soon, people were filling theaters around the world, eager to see the Fox sisters in action. Their specialty was rapping, not like rapping, like communicating with spirits through knocking sounds. Questions would be asked and through a code, answers would be rapped out. As their act grew, Kate was even able to make apparitions appear. Eventually, the sisters admitted that it was all a hoax. Maggie, who was especially tormented by their fame, even gave a live demonstration showing how she and her sister had mastered loudly and imperceptibly cracking their toes to produce the sound of spirits knocking. Meow? Meow, is that you? But the movement was already off and running, and despite the Fox sisters' confessions, other mediums continued talking with the dead using wrappings, table levitation, or the production of ectoplasm, that is, pulling muslin or dough-like materials out of your nose and mouth. But not all hoaxes concerning the dead are completely devoid of some sort of grounding element, even if that element is horribly misrepresented. For decades, people have speculated that the Nazca lines in Peru are the work of aliens, a landing strip for ancient astronauts. So to back up this theory, those who study UFOs have claimed that pre-Columbian Peruvian mummies are proof of extraterrestrials. I'm not saying there are no aliens. I, I read that New York Times piece. I see what you're doing, government. Okay, but why those mummies? It's because of their elongated skulls, which are as a result of their craniums being bound and shaped as babies. This shaping was part of how their community identified and was part of the cultural's ideal physical aesthetic. Unfortunately, the shape of their skulls also fit the mold of what an alien supposedly looks like. 
Since the Roswell UFO incident of 1947, many have tried to present indigenous Andean mummies as alien life forms. Most recently, a documentary series by the website Gaia.com titled Unearthing Nazca presents what appears to be a pre-Columbian child mummy as actually being an ancient Peruvian alien. With the characteristic elongated skull, the child mummy is huddled up with its arms wrapped around its legs. Its skin is an odd powdery white, and its hands and feet only have three long digits each. It has no nose or ears, and the eyes seem heavy-lidded. They called the mummy Maria. Not only is this a hoax and <clears throat> racist, but it's a violation of Peruvian grave robbing and human remains trafficking laws. The head of vertebrate paleontology at Lima University of San Marcos, Rodolfo Salas Gizmondi, believes that judging from the x-rays shown on unearthing Nazca and early photographs of the remains, Maria is a pre-Columbian mummy that was mutilated and altered in order to fit the description of an alien. The white powdery substance could be covering up evidence of alterations made to her body. And while it can't be proven that the team behind Unearthing Nazca committed these crimes, experts say crimes definitely were committed. But when considering corpse hoaxes, what's been called the master hoax of them all is the story of the German corpse factory. In 1917, British papers published a story about a corpse utilization factory, or cadaver factory, in Germany. In such factories, it was claimed that the fats in dead soldiers were being rendered down for glycerin, candles, and lubricants. Despite having no basis in reality, the story spread like wildfire, becoming arguably the greatest propaganda story of World War I. Scholars aren't exactly sure where this story first originated, but a former chief of British Army intelligence claims to have made up the story upon seeing two photographs taken from a captured German soldier. One picture showed horse corpses being taken to be rendered, and the other showed dead German soldiers being transported for burial. The man had the caption for the horses transposed onto the photo of the dead soldiers and sent to a newspaper in Shanghai. You see, at the time, Britain was trying to persuade China to join the war on the side of the Allies. Before British newspapers published the story, their source, a Belgian newspaper published in Britain, ran a story from a German newspaper about how bad the smell from a cadaver rendering factory was. That's cadaver with a K. In German, cadaver with a K is not really used to describe human corpses. It's more for referencing animals, sort of like the word carcass in English. But the damage, depending on what side you're on, I guess, was already done. The lie was taken as truth, China joined the war against Germany, and the Allies won the war. So there you have it. We may come from a death-phobic culture, but we're still pretty obsessed with the dead. What are your favorite death or corpse hoaxes? Tell us in the comments and maybe we'll do another one of these. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you.